And then they are trying to blame other people instead of going, wait a second. I put myself in this situation. I made this choice. I stayed in this situation. And that is where I need to take accountability and see I am the reason this happened. Welcome to the Secret Life Podcast. Tell me your secret. I'll tell you mine. Sometimes you have to go through the darkness to reach the light. That's what I did. After 12 years of recovery in sex and love addiction, I finally found my soulmate, myself. Please join me in my novel, Secret Life of a Hollywood Sex and Love Addict, a four-time bestseller on Amazon. It's a brutal, honest, raw, gnarly ride, but hilarious at the same time. Check it out now on Amazon. Welcome to Secret Life Podcast. I'm Brianne davis Gant. Today, I'm pulling back the curtains of all kinds of human secrets. We'll hear about what people are hiding from themselves or others. You know those deep, dark secrets you probably want to take to your grave? Or those lighter, funnier secrets that are just plain embarrassing? Each week, join me as we take a deep dive into one subject, exploring the how, what, when, where, and why of it all. Get ready for a more focused and revealing journey on the human experience. This is a new chapter of Secret Life, and I'm excited for you to join the ride. And today, we are going to talk about dun-dun-dun accountability for one's actions. Oh my God, if I could just talk about people not taking accountability for their actions. Oh, it has been a week. It has been a motherfucking week, you guys. I have dealt with so many clients and so many people not taking a accountability for their actions. They're playing the victim. They're saying they got manipulated. They're not they're not looking at their behaviors and patterns that led them to choosing the choices that they made to stay in whatever situation and then they are trying to blame other people instead of going, "Wait a second. I put myself in this situation. I made this choice. I stayed in this situation." And that is where I need to take accountability and see I am the reason this happened. I am the reason I stayed. I am the reason that all the signs were there. Even people pointed me in the direction of get out and I still stayed. So that's why I wanted to talk about it today because it's like full force. No one wants to take accountability. And listen, I am a person that did not take accountability for so many years. Oh my God, I know I've said it before, but to have me say I'm sorry or I was wrong or you are right, I I apologize. Oh my God, it was literally, I kid you not, you might as well like poke me in the eye with a needle, you know, rip me open, drag the sorry out of me because it was that difficult for me to take accountability. I mean, I could even feel it. There was one moment with with Mark, I think it was like year eight or nine in recovery. And I had a talk with myself. Just say you're sorry. Just say you're sorry. Like I literally was talking to myself going, you know, you need to say you're sorry. And I felt this huge knot like in my chest, like refusing, like the word I'm sorry was stuck in my chest and it was refusing to come out and go, I'm sorry. Like I just could not do it. And it was literally, I had to talk myself. I had to DBT skill myself. I had to breathe. I had to get my nervous system in check. I had to literally, you know, do writing exercises. I had to go through the whole process to then walk up to Mark, someone I'd known for almost a decade, and go, I'm sorry. I didn't even get to say I'm sorry for dot, dot, dot. Just I'm sorry. And you should have seen the look on his face. He was like, did hell just freeze over? You of all people took accountability. You of all people said you were sorry. Yeah, that's how bad it is for me 
how it was for me to take accountability. I would die on my sword before I took accountability. But here's what I'll tell you. I created a lot of drama. I created a lot of chaos. I hurt a lot of people. A lot of people hurt me. I got to play the victim. I got to be the martyr. I got to manipulate. I got to go out in the world and create chaos, toxicity, use people. People used me. I mean, it was just hell on fucking earth. And so now I can sit on the other side, you know, 15 years later going, I have no problem now taking accountability. Even when I have the smallest amount, just the smallest teeny amount where I could have maybe done a little better or done or said it a little nicer or paused a little bit and just allow the other person to say whatever they needed to say and then said what I was going to say. That's not a problem for me, but it is watching people now is a reflection of who I used to be. And I have no judgment on it. I know how difficult it is. It's still at to this day sometimes. It's a lot easier and it's not in my chest, but it's still, it comes up where I'm like, oh, I have to apologize. Okay, I'll apologize. Okay, I'll apologize. Like it doesn't just flow right out of me. I literally go, oh, I need to apologize. Oh, there it is again. Got to apologize. Oh, got to take accountability. So I have no judgment, but watching people blame others for their patterns and behaviors and creating the narrative that works for them so they can act out in their codependency, their people-pleasing, their addictive behaviors, they're using other people, they're not looking at their own parenting skills, how they've treated their children, and so on and so on. You can just name all the stuff, their friendships, whatever. You just put put a fill in the blank. It's literally so infuriating because I literally say, all you got to do is say you're sorry. Just say you're sorry. And whatever they say, that's okay. But you just got to say sorry or take accountability and don't make yourself the victim. Go, okay, that guy did me wrong. He was toxic. He was an unavailable toxic person. And I kept in the relationship. Yes, I could totally blame him. I can blame him for being unavailable. I can blame him for saying one thing and doing another thing. I can blame him for telling me something and acting like he wanted more and then not showing up and giving it to me and then telling me something different to keep me around and then falling for that and then going back and then again getting broken up with and blah, 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 all of that. But where's your part? You saw the signs. There's accountability there. Wow, I fell for it again. I saw the signs. I saw he wasn't available. I saw the toxicity. I saw he was bathing in trauma. I saw all of that. And I still stayed. I still stayed. Whose actual fault is it? Is it the person, the toxic person, unavailable toxic person? No. Can't control that person. That person's on their own journey. We don't know what they have to go through. We don't know their karma or dharma or whatever. But me, the person sticking around, I'm responsible for that. I'm responsible for the patterns I play out. I'm responsible for the behaviors. I'm responsible for letting go of important things in my life to fill the need of this other person. And then I can't be resentful that they decided not to be with me anymore. That's not taking accountability. That's not doing the inner work. That's not doing the inner healing. And let's do another narrative I'm dealing with. A parent, a parent not showing up for their child and not being there and neglecting their child. Neglect can look at the the teeniest little forms of neglect. You can look at Just not being around, traveling too much, um, not being available, working too hard. I see that a lot. A lot of young kids Mark and I work with are, you know, the children of high profile people that weren't around and they felt neglected. And listen, I haven't done certain things in my career because I don't want to miss my child's childhood. That's a choice. That's a decision I am actually actively making to be more at home and present for my child. And then in five years, when he wants nothing to do with me at 10, 
then I'll go do those things. But I want to be present for my child because I'm seeing patterns right now of overworked parents. Our parents are not around or traveling too much and doing all those things. So I'm making that conscious choice. But a parent that keeps doing it and not taking accountability for it and then blaming the child for not getting over it is not taking accountability because that child didn't get the tools that they needed, the stability that they needed to function in this world on life's terms. And so this accountability, saying I'm sorry, showing up, keeping your side of the street clean, is the number one thing that I try to teach anybody because it's the number one thing that gave me peace and serenity within myself and stop playing the victim in life. Because the victim in life then allows us to go and act out and do all these crazy things that I was doing, using other people, cheating, lying, stealing, all the shit that I did, all the shit, which is more of it in book two coming out soon. And it's just, oh my God, that's going to be next level. But it's just, I, I think it's important if you can look at your day today and go, Where am I not taking accountability? Where have I kind of played the victim? And it could be the smallest little thing. It could be, you know, looking at a friend not showing up or not texting you back and then you getting angry at them and going, wait a second, how long has this been going on? I've actually allowed this friend to flake on me for many years And I've never called them out or I've made a joke about it or I haven't held their ass to the fire. That's your problem, not theirs. So you then have to make a choice. That's accountability to myself. So I would say to this friend or have someone say to this friend, hey, I realize I've let this go on a long time and it's actually building up resentment and I want to keep our friendship and I feel myself distancing from you and moving forward If we text, can you text me back and just say you're busy? Or if we have plans and you flake or you can't do it, then don't make plans with me if you feel like you're going to flake. I can't move forward in a friendship where they you don't keep your word. And it's important for me now to have people to show up and keep their word in my life. And if you can't do that, that's okay. I just have to be truthfully honest because I haven't been and I haven't been keeping myself accountable to to holding our friendship at a higher level. And that's how I would have someone deal with it because in the back you're wondering am I not good enough for this person? They don't love me enough. I I'm not worthy enough for them to show up for. Fuck them. You resentments happen. You start gossiping about them with your other friends. If you have a group of friends, like it's just a hot mess express. So I want you to look at is there anybody in your life right now that is you're not being accountable with yourself about and you're playing the victim? You're playing that they are taking advantage of you or they were unavailable and they didn't give you what you needed and now you're the victim and poor you, boo-hoo, blah, blah, blah. I want you to look at that because that is where you are actually not taking accountability and going, wow, I did not take accountability for myself and that I stayed in this. And then also look at, is there a place in your life you're not taking accountability and apologizing? Because accountability looks two ways, our patterns and behavior and apologizing and keeping our side of the street clean. So this week is all about accountability week. So where are you not taking accountability in your life? Look at it. It took me a long time. So (laughs) it was a journey. And still to this day, it's a journey. Even with my son, I have to take accountability. It's like, "Mm, I shouldn't have said it like that. And I have to go up to him oh, did I make you feel like that? I'm really sorry. That is not how I meant it. Or I think, oh, I want, I have unrealistic expectations of him and that is not okay. And I need to break that pattern and I need to take accountability. And I have to say, you know what? You didn't have to do that. You could have waited. That's me having unrealistic expectations on you. I am sorry, Davis. Moving forward, I will not do that. And he's like, thanks, mom. So I'm asking you, try it. It's so freeing. It's so freeing to get that monkey off my back and not to have to be right 
have to be the victim, have to say, woe is me, have to walk around like sad, sad Terziak and being the one, well, like, oh, people take advantage of me. It's like, no, just take accountability for your patterns and behaviors and say you're sorry when you've done wrong. Thank you for joining me and thank you for listening to Secret Life Podcast. I love to know your thoughts on this subject where you're not taking accountability or you see it play out in your life. And let me know if there's anything you want to talk about next week or the following week. Send me a note at secretlifepodcasts at iCloud.com. Until next time. Thanks again for listening to the show. Please subscribe, rate, share, or send me a note at secretlifepodcast.com. And if you like to check out my book, head over to secretlifenovel.com or Amazon to pick up a copy for yourself or someone you love. Thanks again. See you soon.